over the phone. No one's going to believe it, and, 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 and it's just going to go down. But they are in every community. They're in your schools. They're in your city council. And they are one specific group that has done everything. And they own Hollywood. Let's put it that way. All right, all right. And so, every last, so you, every you, last one of them is in on it. They, I actually spent two years investigating that group. And, and I, I learned a lot of things in those two years. Well, and, I, I, uh, I'm going to say the Z word and say Zionist. But the, the, the point are coming at is that if, if they were alone, like, you know, a handful of them, they obviously have infiltrated and have cohorts in high places here that are going along with oh, this. Oh, well, well, what it is is that they're really, really good at manipulating and getting people to follow them. And so it doesn't matter if, if they go out and do it. If we do it to ourselves, they've got us. And if they can convince us we should rat on our neighbors because they have a gun or rat on our neighbors because they have food storage, or rat on our neighbors because they're planning something, they've won. Because all they have to do is snuff people off one at a time. And and that's the state that we're in. We we are in that condition now. Yeah, and it, to me, and it looks like it's, they are so arrogant and we are so disorganized and, uh, is that they don't even have to do anything. You know, it's... it's, it's no, like, I, I think we're going to destroy ourselves. They've got us, you know, in, into a mindset, we're just going to take ourselves out. So, that's I mean, you know, line. that's why... Yeah. That's why I don't agree with some of my uh, talk show host uh, peers who say that you know uh, the people are being watched and harassed and whatnot. Is that I go I go yeah okay fine maybe but they don't have to. I mean it's like you go out into the general public, go to a mall, go to some uh, a football game, go to some general cross section of public. I don't mean like a particular concert or but like just and talk about this stuff. It, people think you're crazy. I mean, the vast yeah. majority yeah. of this country, uh, uh, you know, they may say, "Well, we don't approve about Congress," or "We, yeah, uh, we think there's something else behind 9/11." But that's it. They're they're not. They're like they're law. They're out there, you know. And so, I, 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 it's not that I'm saying we shouldn't try, and you know, and I, I want to. I'm obviously I'm doing this show, and I'm definitely not getting rich doing it. My point is that um, I'm not worried about talking about it in public as much because they don't have to do anything. They just sit back and just kind of laugh. You know, something has to change, and I don't know what that change is. And there's got to be something we can do, and I don't know what that is. And I, I'm searching for it, and I'm, I'm well, open to it. What, what it is, the best thing that could ever happen to this country right now is to have the dollar bill just fall apart and have people start starving. Because when they start starving, they start looking for a reason why. And then, then as soon as people are not comfortable in their existence, uh, they, they start looking for answers. And they get a lot more. See, but that is exactly why I don't think the dollar will collapse because no, the, they're, they're they're doing everything they can to keep it keep it from going yeah, down because, because it's like know. it's like the scenario of the of the frog in the pot. You want to turn yeah. it up to one degree at a time until they cook them. You don't want to like all of a sudden shock them by having whoa, it's really hot, you know. And wh I don't know what okay, that now. I don't know what that threshold is. I don't know where that turn is i don't know what the critical mass is i don't know i don't know that well even and, and taking out so you know i know what the critical what 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 the point of no return is where people actually will stand up and rebel there's enough people that still believe in the bible and things like that which means that the mark of the beast the chip on the hand is the final wall and people they are going to have so much resistance with that that, and, and they want it bad. They want that bad. They want the, the chip in the hand for buying right, and selling. Right. And I, don't, I don't want to get off topic of this because we have stuff here, but let me just take the example. Uh, if they've trained us, if I can use this term, to watch for the chip in the hand. So what you do is you do the chip in the hand without the chip in the hand, and if you have the biometric card that's tied to your bio, whether it be your eye or what have you, oh, I know. It, is I as, know. it is as good as the chip in the hand, only it's not the chip in the hand, and therefore... It doesn't trigger that chip in the hand uh, uh, knee jerk reaction. Yeah, but there's also the or the number to his name. So that follows the bio card. They're they're having big troubles because the number to his name, you know, the mark or the or the number uh, that that card represents the number. Yeah, but see, and a lot so of the people who are into the number uh, number of the beast are sitting around waiting for the rapture and not doing much about it. So I, I don't mean to sound bitter, but the people sitting around waiting for the rapture are sitting on their hands 
and they're not well, doing something about it. So, it, it, you know, they have been disarmed with the uh, with the scenario of the rapture, so they're just sitting around waiting. You have people waiting for uh, 2012 to come in. You have people waiting for aliens to come down. Uh, you know, and you so know, you know, I'm worried the rapture happened and none of us made it. No, nah, it, it it doesn't because he, you know, I I've studied the Bible a lot on my own for many years, and the the whole that whole scenario is what I call the poison pen gospel. It is created by melding together certain verses and certain interpretations. It is not in the Bible as presented. It is created from all of that. So I, I yeah. want to get I want to get people away from the rapture. Forget the aliens. Forget the rapture. If Jesus comes, I'll be as happy as the next guy. But we're here. We're God with skin on it, so to speak. We are the uh, the people who are supposed to be doing things about it. Now, what I want to know is what to do, and I'm not getting answers from people. I get a lot of people on the radio. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about people who make a living doing radio shows, scaring people, talking about what's happening, and I don't hear answers. And when I get try to get these people on the air and on the radio and say, well, let's hear what, let me get an answer. Let me give me an answer. What do we do? What do we do? I don't hear anything. Because they're making a living out of... Uh, uh, being the gate, uh, the person who's uh, warning, and, and that's fine. You, you need people who are town criers, but we need solutions, and we don't. Ha- I don't have any. I don't see anybody. I'm doing this nine years, and I've had everything from Planet X to you know aliens attacking the world to you know all this all this stuff, and I don't have solutions. Now, I think one good thing what you're doing here is you're pointing out a, a smoking gun that is even more obvious. I think. Then, as presented anyway, as as the nine eleven stuff, you know, this is it's it's, yeah, it's they, they they made so many major blunders with this one that are so technically provable, you know. Anyone can go over those seismograms, just of average intelligence, study them for a while, and figure out the earthquake wasn't real. Um, anyone can look at the picture of Reactor Three and see that it really is gone. Why weren't we told? Mm-hmm. Um, most people or many people out there know that you can't just blow up a nuclear plant by getting it wet. Um, you, honestly, the nuclear, the, what happened at Fukushima was so impossible. If you took yeah, no, look, that I, nuclear plant I, I don't mean and cut, you threw it, huh? I don't, I don't mean, you, you made your point quite well, but what's coming from this now is what happens shortly thereafter. They have, uh, well, let's look and see what reactors we have that might be in danger. And all of a sudden, the they got a brown ferry. That's why I, 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 I talked about brown ferry and I used brown ferry as a reference. Because Brown's Ferry is the clone of Fukushima in America. That's the reason why all my references go to Brown's Ferry. Well, what, what that I'm, is the one. What I'm saying is that they've already started very shortly afterwards to say, "Who? Oh, let's see what, what could, how this can happen in America." And they came up with a list of places that need to be uh, uh, guarded against this type of thing. They're already setting us up for uh, something that could go wrong like that. I mean, they are immediately went, "Hmm, how can this?" be here and they come up with this list out of nowhere of all these reactors that are now all of a sudden vulnerable that no one ever figured out was vulnerable and i said well, you know, the reason I, I, why but i but i, okay, but I said I, I said that you know that one of the things they brought up was a reactor that's 10 miles from my house and i'm going really yeah. really a lot of a lot well, of earthquakes hit the midwest and a lot of tsunamis hit the midwest so how could this possibly be a risk you know it, it's just ludicrous well, the thing is, is they can generate earthquakes, and they and they and they can generate floods. They can create a scenario. They could have a tornado taken out. Oh, a 5.0 tornado hit it. You know, they've got the weather modification well established. You know, 5.0 tornado hits a nuclear plant, it blows up. Tsunami hits a nuclear plant. Yeah, well, you know, I up. probably hits a nuclear plant, it blows up. But I think I think if a tornado actually hit, uh, you know, a an F5 hit a nuclear plant, it probably would withstand it because of the way it was built, but. As yes, we're yes. seeing, so people don't know that. People believe right, the tsunami took right. out Fukushima. I need to explain something. That all right, all right, hold on. Right, we'll come back and, and you, you have the floor. Well, you can explain it, but we're going to take a break. Okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to get back to Fukushima and explain a couple of things. Okay. Why, we'll go- <laughs> um, I got a little bit uh, sidetracked on the last half hour. Um, what I need to do is walk people through why Fukushima was impossible. If you can open up link number eleven. Okay. And, uh, and it's the real emergency backup systems. One thing that people don't realize about Fukushima and nuclear power in general is your backup systems, uh, the electrical backup systems, your, your, your diesel generators are pretty much only there to keep business as usual. 
Um, the real emergency backup systems at a nuclear facility don't need any electricity at all to function. Um, and that's why Fukushima was impossible. Um, the swapping of the external generators by the tsunami was irrelevant because the real emergency backup systems are driven by steam from the reactors themselves. So in other words, when your power goes offline and your steam that's normally coming out of that reactor to turn your turbine, um, when, when you don't need that power and you can't turn that generator anymore because the reactor is putting out too much, um, that um, and putting out too much should be putting through an idle generator without overspinning it. Um, you enter an emergency backup mode, and that steam is used to spin cooling pumps to cool the reactor off. So losing your diesel generators to spin electrical cooling pumps is irrelevant if you're supposed to have backup steam turbine pumps that do the exact same job. Actually, that makes, quite, that so, makes a, that's brilliant. That makes a lot of sense. You're sure going to have yeah, plenty of steam. There's no way Fukushima could have... You know, when Fukushima blew up, when Fukushima got hit by the tsunami, and everybody, you know, I heard on the news that a nuclear plant got hit by a tsunami, my thought was, is why, why does that matter? Because I understood reactor systems good enough so that I knew that that couldn't cause any problem at all. The only thing you're going to do when, uh, when, when you kick off all electricity to that nuclear power plant, what is supposed to happen is the steam from that reactor is supposed to start powering pumps rather than turn a generator. Well, the problem is, is that at, at, uh, at reactors uh, 1, 2, and 3, all fueled reactors, those systems activated immediately, just like they should when the generator went off, when the generator is cut off. The trouble is, is that within 11 minutes at reactor 1, that system shut itself off, and the only way that it can shut itself off is if it, if, it, if it gets a powered command from the controller to shut itself off. Well, then here we get into Stuxnet. This Magna BSP company came out of Demona, Israel, where Stuxnet was written. And it, anyway, there, okay, there, there's 20. a link. The Stuxnet is documented as number 20. Yes, Stuxnet is documented to have been, have been uh, written by the Israeli Defense Forces, those, those three links are critical because everybody has been saying, well, we don't know where Stuxnet came from. Well, the Israelis have bragged about and celebrated and videos on YouTube and everything about writing Stuxnet and destroying Iran's nuclear program with it. Well, months later, after, after, uh, after Japan um, offers to enrich uranium for, for Iran, out of the exact same... Within within a mile of where Stuxnet was written, here comes a security company and gets access to the heart of Fukushima. Well, Japan obviously is an enemy now, and, and they need to be taken out every bit, bit as bad as Iran. This uh, this uh, security company, I am you know I you know because I didn't get an admission from them directly. Um, you know you'll never get an admission that they actually stuck a, a flash drive in one of those uh, PLCs to infect uh, Fukushima with this virus. Um, but I did get the proof in an article written in the Jerusalem Post that uh, that they had a full-time unauthorized data connection to that to the heart to the SCADA system in that facility via a connection that they had made to one of their cameras, one of their nuke cameras in that facility. So here we have the security company having a totally unauthorized data connection into the heart of Fukushima, into the reactor rooms, and all those SCADA systems are interlinked. Um, you know, and, and it could have probably jumped out of Fukushima and gone over to some of the other reactors that acted up after the tsunami, too, which is, which is impossible. But they had other reactors uh, have problems. Um, and, and, and it's virtually impossible. Well, these emergency systems activated at Fukushima. That's the bottom line. At all three reactors, they activated. At, at Reactor 1, they cut off after 11 minutes. And reactor one promptly went into meltdown because if you cut off those emergency systems um, within within the three hours of shutting a reactor down, um, the reactor will even even though it's been scrammed and it's 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 not doing anything to perpetuate a chain reaction, uh, just the, uh, the 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 breakdown of of, of some of the uh, highly radioactive isotopes will keep that reactor hot and keep it generating heat. So you need those cooling pumps running to prevent a meltdown, even though the reactor is shut off. 
at reactor one, those that system was told to shut off 